The poster for Greta, the new film from Irish director Neil Jordan, depicts a smart handbag caught in a hook from a fishing line. The poster is a somewhat more original than the movie it's advertising because the screenplay written by Jordan and Ray Wright isn't exactly fresh. Fortunately, Jordan is a sufficiently talented and resourceful director to enable him to avoid at least some of the clichés that are constantly threatening to skewer the film. The title character is played by the wonderful Isabel Huppert, whose stellar career in French films dates back to the early 70s, and she came to Australia to make Cactus with the late Paul Cox in 1986. Greta is a French woman, or is she, living alone in a pleasant New York house. We meet her through Frances Chloe Grace Moretz, a girl from Boston who's working as a waitress in a very high-class restaurant and living in a well-appointed apartment with her best friend Erica Maker Munro. While riding on the subway, Frances notices that someone has left behind a rather smart handbag and she brings it home, prompting Erica to point out that, in New York, you find a bag, you call the bomb squad. But Frances is an old-fashioned, polite young woman and decides to return the bag, which is how she meets Greta, who is welcoming and grateful and makes her tea. Frances recently lost the mother she adored and Greta's daughter is living in Paris, she says, so it's only natural that a kind of mother-daughter relationship occurs. That is until Frances discovers something about Greta in a scene of singular improbability and attempts to break off the relationship. Greta isn't having any of that, however, and becomes a stalker, phoning, texting, and turning up at Francis's workplace. I mentioned some overturned clichés. One of these is a moment of horror that proves to have been a dream. How many times have we seen that on the screen before? Until Jordan engagingly upends our expectations. Isabel Huppé's intense mother figure is a nicely judged portrait of insanity, while Moretz brings more than might have been expected to the role of the imperiled heroine, who makes some agonisingly wrong decisions. When you get right down to it, the hook on which the entire film is predicated, that left-behind handbag, is pretty flimsy. But if you can accept it as a way of bringing these two central characters together, there's plenty to enjoy in Greta, and mounting suspense as the screws are tightened for the not entirely predictable finale. I'm giving Greta three and a half stars. Thank you.